The Bank of Jamaica has been rolling out a central bank digital currency known as Jamdex. Officials call it the future of money in Jamaica, claiming it will modernize payments, strengthen the economy, and improve financial inclusion. But the real question is this. Is this truly progress, or should Jamaicans be concerned about what comes with a state-backed digital dollar? To answer that, it's important to understand what Jamdex actually is, why the government insists the country needs it, and what risks are attached to its use. Jamdex stands for Jamaica Digital Exchange. It is the country's official central bank digital currency, or CBDC. Unlike online banking transactions that move commercial bank balances, Jamdex is issued directly by the Bank of Jamaica. That distinction is critical. When someone pays with a debit card today, what moves is not physical money, but a claim on a commercial bank. Jamdex, on the other hand, is digital cash guaranteed by the central bank itself. It has the exact same value as paper dollars and coins, but it exists entirely in digital form. Another difference is accessibility. To use Jamdex, there is no requirement for a traditional bank account. Instead, all that's needed is a digital wallet app. That makes it legal tender that is fee-free, instant, and widely available, at least in theory. So, in short, Jamdex is digital Jamaican money, created and controlled by the Bank of Jamaica, and it has the same status as cash. The Bank of Jamaica has laid out several reasons why Jamdex is supposed to be beneficial. First, the central bank argues that the cost of printing and managing physical cash is too high. Paper money wears out, coins disappear from circulation, and distributing currency across the island requires constant security and logistics. By replacing much of that with digital currency, these costs can be reduced. Second, the government says digital money is a tool for financial inclusion. Roughly one in six Jamaicans do not have access to traditional banking. Jamdex is meant to give these individuals a way to store and transfer money without relying on commercial banks. A smartphone with a wallet app would be enough. Third, the Bank of Jamaica claims Jamdex will make payments faster and cheaper. Transactions between individuals would be instant and free. Merchants could receive payments without paying high card processing fees, which could encourage more digital adoption in small businesses. Finally, officials argue that Jamdex strengthens monetary policy. By having a digital form of legal tender, the central bank can directly manage supply, track flows of money more closely, and design new tools to keep inflation in check. On paper, these arguments paint Jamdex as a modern solution to old problems. But there is another side to the story. For many Jamaicans, the biggest issue is not whether Jamdex works, but what it represents. Privacy is the first concern. Every Jamdex transaction is traceable. Unlike cash, which leaves no trace, digital money means each purchase, transfer, or payment can, in theory, be monitored. This gives the government and the central bank unprecedented visibility into personal financial lives. Surveillance is the second concern. Once every transaction is logged in a central system, it becomes possible to build complete profiles of spending habits. This data could be stored indefinitely and accessed whenever authorities want it. The third issue is account access. With traditional cash, no one can stop a person from spending the notes in their wallet. With Jamdex, accounts exist on a system controlled by the central bank. Wallets could be frozen or blocked under certain conditions. That raises the fear that if someone falls out of political favor or violates certain rules, their access to money could be cut off instantly. Fourth, there is the risk of government overreach. Cash allows people to operate independently. Digital currency does not. A central bank-issued currency consolidates financial control in the hands of the state. Finally, there is the fear of lost financial freedom. As cash use declines, people may be left with no option but to rely on Jamdex. Once that shift is complete, individuals will no longer have the choice of transacting outside of the digital system. These concerns are not unique to Jamaica. They're part of a global debate on central bank digital currencies. Over 130 countries are currently studying or developing central bank digital currencies. The Bahamas launched its sand dollar in 2020. Nigeria launched the Ienaria in 2021. China is testing its digital yuan across multiple provinces. The results so far are mixed. In many places, adoption has been slow. Citizens are hesitant to give up cash or use a system they don't fully trust. 
But governments continue to push forward, seeing CBDCs as inevitable. In this sense, Jamaica is not an outlier. It is part of a worldwide movement toward digitizing money. And, like in other countries, the same questions about privacy, control, and trust apply. If Jamdex gains traction, there are some practical advantages. Government payments such as pensions, PATH benefits, or disaster relief could be delivered directly into digital wallets. This would reduce delays, fraud, and costs. Everyday banking fees could decline. There would be no need to pay transfer fees for peer-to-peer -peer payments. People would not need to wait in long ATM lines just to access their own money. At an international level, Jamaica could also market itself as a leader in digital finance, attracting investment and modernizing its economy. These are the outcomes the Bank of Jamaica promotes, but they come with risks that cannot be ignored. The dangers of central bank digital currencies are not hypothetical. They are built into the design of the system. First, there is a guaranteed loss of privacy. With Jamdex, every transaction is recorded. Cash purchases, which leave no trace, will no longer exist once digital currency dominates. Citizens would have no way to buy or sell without leaving a permanent digital footprint. Second, there is the danger of total government control. The Bank of Jamaica, or the government itself, would have the ability to freeze, limit, or block digital wallets. A person could be cut off from money instantly, with no appeal process. Third, selective enforcement is possible. Digital money creates the ability to punish individuals selectively. Political opponents, activists, or even citizens who protest government policy could find their wallets restricted. Fourth, there is programmable money. Rules could be coded into Damdex so that it only works for certain purchases. For example, digital dollars might be blocked from buying alcohol or set to expire if not spent by a deadline. Fifth, surveillance would become a permanent feature. Every cent spent would create a data trail that the government controls. Financial privacy, once lost, would not return. Finally, there is the point of no escape. If physical cash is phased out, people will have no alternative. All transactions will pass through a government-controlled network. Citizens will be completely dependent on it, regardless of whether they agree with its terms. These risks show that digital currency is not simply a modern payment method. It is a fundamental shift in who controls money itself. Jamdex is not yet central to daily life in Jamaica. Adoption is still limited, and it may take years before the system is fully embedded. But the global direction is already set. Central bank digital currencies are advancing, and governments are determined to push them forward. When that shift becomes unavoidable, financial systems will be more centralized, and citizens will face reduced privacy, reduced independence, and reduced freedom. Some see decentralized currencies like Bitcoin as an alternative. These offer more openness and resist direct control by any one government. But even here, there is no guarantee. Any country can choose to restrict or ban their use at any time. That means alternatives are never fully secure against state authority. The future of money is digital. The only real question is not whether central bank digital currencies will exist, but how much control governments will take and how little choice the public will be left with once cash disappears.